Our sermon today is based on those words of John 6. A couple weeks ago, we found out that our pastor, and I can talk about him since he's gone now, uh, spent 20 years in the ministry. And so we had a little uh, get-together where we gave a little remembrance to him. And I had the pleasure of uh, giving, giving this little time to him. And I asked those of you present to think back 20 years ago to 1995. And we discussed some of the things that happened 20 years ago, and it was pitiful. None of us could remember anything exciting from 20 years ago. Well, today I have a little more of a challenge for you. Instead of thinking back 20 years ago, I'd like you to think back to 1921. Everybody got it? Now, I'm getting old and I'm forgetful, so I had to go to Google, you know, kind of refresh my memory on what happened back then. But in 1921, the people of Indianapolis were inundated with one of those media things where they try to get you to think about something that's coming shortly. And they kept saying, wonder is coming. Wonder is coming. Well, what arrived on that historic day was Wonder Bread. I got this in the store the other day. I don't think it was from 1921, but it's still in the stores. This product would stir the nation's imagina imagination like no others. And nearly a century later, it continues to do that. How did the name Wonder come about? In 1920, the international balloon race was held at Indianapolis Speedway. The people saw the bright colors of all the balloons floating around that large raceway. And the iconic balloons that you see on the wrapper came about. Wonder Bread soon became a common sight in kitchens across America. Then, everyone's favorite white bread really took off in the 1930s when pre-sliced bread became all the rage. Thus, the phrase, best thing since sliced bread. Today, Wonder Bread is still enjoyed by millions of Americans across the nation, where it's packed in lunch boxes, served in restaurants, and craved by those young and old. So, what does Wonder Bread have to do with Jesus. Just then, just this, when Jesus preached the sermon that we read as our gospel in John chapter 6, his audience numbered in the thousands, and they were well fed. You saw in last Sunday's gospel lesson, Jesus took a little boy's sack, lunch of bread and fish, blessed it, and used it to miraculously feed a crowd, the men alone numbering over 5,000. He blessed the bread and it multiplied until they had all their fill and couldn't eat another bite. Their bellies were full. The people came back to him the next day wanting more Wonder Bread. Jesus refused them. Then he introduced himself as the real Wonder Bread from heaven. Jesus didn't come to earth to be lunch lady in the cafeteria. Jesus wants to feed your hungry soul with, with spiritual food, so that with your faith, full of God's word, it will lead you to, as Matthew 6 says, seek first the kingdom of God. So, before you go home today and eat, let's take and eat this morning from Jesus, the wonder bread from heaven. The crowd of people chasing after Jesus was confused about bread making, they didn't understand who Jesus was or what he was doing, especially after he said to them in verse 26, 
You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. They did not chase him to find the Savior that Jesus claimed to be. They chased after Jesus to make him the Savior they wanted him to be. People are still doing it today. Creating a Savior in their minds and, and lives that doesn't necessarily match up with the Savior that God sent into the world. We want and we want now. We pray like it's a supermarket. We're pushing a cart and filling it up with all the requested items we want. And we want them now. Jesus directs our attention to what often is missing from our grocery cart, the miracle of himself. The Son of God stands in our midst and says, as in verse 27, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Jesus' question for you this morning is this. For what food are you working? Is it A, are you working merely to make a living, to have a nice home, to be comfortable and ready for the weekend? If so, you're working for food that spoils. Or B, if your energy in life is going toward getting enough money to make you comfortable, you're eating the wrong bread. It's stale. It's spoiled. C or C, if your goals and ambitions for life replace God, they are bread slices that spoil. If you hunger after the bread of pleasure, amusement, honor, wealth, then you're the eating the bread of death that will never satisfy your hunger because you'll always want more in life. Jesus did not shed his blood so that we might hunger for perishable pursuits. He points to our souls and says, work for food that endures to eternal life. And now don't miss this because it's important. This food that endures to eternal life is given to you by the Son of Man. God alone gives eternal life, and God alone sustains life through faith in Christ. Do you want to live a life forever untouched by sin and the consequences of sin? Do you want holiness, innocence, purity of heart and hand? You need the wonder bread of heaven. You need Christ. Jesus is our bread of life. He's the ingredients. He's the machine. The loaf of life has already been made. It is accomplished, and every day it is offered to us as fresh and tasty as the day he finished it on that Easter Sunday when he popped out of the oven of the tomb. You know how fresh bakery has a little date on the label indicating the day it was, it was, it was baked to assure you of its freshness? Listen to the label of authenticity given to the loaf of life in verse 27. On Christ... God the Father has placed his seal of approval. At his baptism, God the Father placed his seal of approval on Jesus also. In Luke 3, we hear God says, You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. With the feeding of the 5,000, with each miracle, God places Jesus' credentials before the world for all to see. Jesus is the wonder bread from heaven. Well, the people listening to Jesus finally figured out he wasn't talking about normal bread, but something special, a divine loaf from heaven. But they think they can buy it. They asked him in verse 28, what must we do to do the works God requires? There's a question often asked even by confused believers. What can I do to make God happy? How can I please God for what I do? You could answer, I got to do everything to make God happy. In which case, you're, real, you're really saying, God, lucky for you, I'm on your side. Who do you think we are as if we believe God wants us to earn the loaf of life? That's some ego to think we are part of an elite group of superhumans who can actually please God. The words in Proverbs 16, verse 5 say, 
The Lord detests the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. If you want to talk about works that earn the wonder bread of heaven, then listen to Jesus in verse 29. Jesus answered, The word of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. God's work is to bring people to faith. God does the work. God creates the faith. Saving faith makes the blessings of Jesus suffering and death ours. Stop working so hard to make bread. Start eating and believing Jesus who says, verse 35, I am the bread of life. He's not a loaf, he's a person. A believer's satisfaction in, is believing in Jesus. If Jesus did die for my sins and his death did totally and sufficiently and permanently atone for my sins, then I am satisfied in knowing my sins are forgiven. God is satisfied by the payment. There is no more need to hunger for more. Why hunger and thirst for something already given? Why go back to the old way of life of trying to grind out living a good life for the sake of eternal life when Jesus accomplished and finished the loaf of life for us? There's a lot of people who are hungry in this world, but they look to God with, as, with a feeding trough faith. They want God to give them everything they want without having to work hard for it. Surprisingly, they are the same people who never are satisfied but always hungry for more. Why? Because it's not about having a full belly and a happy home. It's about possessing a soul that is truly at peace with God. In verse 39, 35, we hear Jesus say, He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. What comfort and what strength that gives to my faith Jesus will be my food. When I go to him, I will never hunger but live forever. So I will trust these words when I lie down to sleep at night and when I get up in the morning. I will rely on these words at work or going to another doctor's appointment or whatever I do during the day. And should my family, my children, my friends or parents leave me, I will go to Jesus and find help. For did not he himself hungry and alone in the wilderness, faced the devil who challenged him to abuse his divine power by making loaves of bread out of stones lying on the ground. And did not Jesus retort in Matthew 4, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And did not Jesus promise to provide for all my earthly needs when he taught me to pray, give us today our daily bread, as an expression of my dependence upon him to meet all our needs in life. Many may say Wonder Bread is not good for you. It's processed and all the good stuff taken out. Well, it's still for sale. And not so Jesus. After this service, we'll be able to have some of this Wonder Bread with some nice toppings to put on it for you to enjoy. After that, we'll have Bible class where we can talk a little more about the bread of life as discussed in the three Bible readings we had today, the Old Testament reading, the Epistle reading, and this Gospel reading. And then you'll still have time to hit you know, the uh, restaurant on the way home for your brunch. But nothing can beat going home after filling up on Jesus, the wonder bread of life. He endured the, ground of, the grind of life and the hassle and hell of death on the cross so you and I may now be satisfied in him. Let's bow our heads and thank God for the bread of life which he offers in his word and in his sacraments. We pray. Thank you, our Heavenly Father for the bread that came down from heaven, the bread of life which is available to us, Lord, which you have offered to us and give us through faith in you. Teach us what these words mean. In Jesus' name, 
Amen.